Okay, in this video, we're going to do a problem uh, that we did in class, uh, at least in two of my sections, which is basically this. If I take this block, okay, and I have, um, uh, if basically, if I can accelerate this one, can I accelerate this guy fast enough so that this guy stays connected without me having my hand on it? I can't do it for you in, in front of this, but um, hopefully you understand the setup of the problem. Um, and for those of you in class, you saw it, that if I move this thing fast enough, I can't actually get this to stay on here. So the question is, how do we actually do that? Um, well, uh, let's, um, let's start uh, here, and let me just get, uh, make sure I'm focused. Okay. Um, so, uh, first of all, let's draw our picture. Um, we have, this is the thin block. This is the thick block. Now let's just look at the free body diagram of this thick block. I'm going to keep this guy here just so I can remember um, what it looks like, but I want to be very clear that I'm not doing a free body diagram of this guy. Uh, maybe I'll, uh, I'll kind of, there we go, so that we know that we're not doing anything with that. Okay, so first of all, we have a block. It has a mass. It always has gravity. Of course, this is the issue is that it wants to fall down. Okay, so we have gravity going down that way. Uh, what else do we have? Well, um, we have a the, this block is pushing on the other block, and so um, that's creating a uh, normal force. Anytime we have something, one thing pushing on another thing, that is a normal force. It's just going to act right there, um, and that's our normal force right there. Okay, so we have a normal force and gravity. But um, if we just had this, of course, uh, the block would fall down. Um, we, can't, we can't do this. Uh, we can't um, keep the block from falling down uh, without uh, some other force. Of course, that force in this case is actually the force of friction. There's actually friction right here, static friction, that's acting right there um, and keeping the block from falling down as it moves to the right. Um, so let's see what kind of conditions we need to actually keep get that to happen. Um, well, let's look in the x first of all. F net x is equal to, well, let's look at what we have. We only have one force in the x direction if I call this x and this y, we simply have the normal force. And that's equal to mass of the block times the acceleration in the x-direction. Okay, it's a good start. Let's look in the y. We have two forces in this case. We have force of gravity. And we have the static friction. Uh, of course, I've got the sign wrong for force of gravity. That should be a minus sign. Um, and then static friction should be positive. And that's also equal to mass times acceleration. Of course, in this case, we don't want the block to fall down, and we, it's definitely not going to go up. And so uh, we don't actually have any acceleration in the y direction. So the other way to figure that out is to say that the static friction is equal to the force of gravity. Okay. Um, we also always know that uh, the, the, the equation for friction is, is always the same, which is basically that, uh, in this case, static friction is equal to mu static, the static um, friction component uh, uh, for wood against wood, in this case, um, times the normal force. And I just didn't actually ask why, that, why this is always true. Basically, the idea is that um, this mu is how, um, how much interaction, basically, two things have with each other. And uh, this, this Fn basically is saying, well, how, how strongly are they actually interacting? So two materials tend to interact with each other, but the more tightly they're being pressed together, the more that one is pressing against the other, um, is going to determine how much static friction you have. Of course, you know that if I press down on this thing really hard and try to move it, it's much harder to move than if I just press lightly on it and try to move it, right? Okay, so that's our Fn, is that, that pressing, and the mu s is why it's harder to move, uh, let's say, rubber against wood than wood against wood. Okay, so uh, static friction is equal to Fg. We know that Fg is also is always mass times uh, the acceleration due to gravity, um, and we know that, again, the static friction is mu s fn, okay? So now we just need to figure out what fn is. Well, fn is actually equal to this 
max it's equal to mass times the acceleration in the x direction because there's only one force going in uh, in the x direction and that's this normal force it's the only thing and so that force is is exactly what's giving us that acceleration um, the other way to think about it is that as I'm running if I'm running and pushing on the block I'm accelerating the block and the block is accelerating the second block okay um, through the normal force okay so let's plug that in we're going to get that mu s m Ax is equal to mg. We can cancel these m's out. Thank goodness, I didn't want to weigh it. And we find the acceleration that I need to keep that block stationary, to keep it from falling down. It's just g over mu s. Um, if you look it up, uh, the wood on uh, that, well, first of all, g is it's always around 10 meters per second squared. And mu s for wood on wood is about 0 0.4. 10 divided by 0 0.4 um, is uh, uh, the same as basically, um, this is 4 is, is uh, 0.4 is, is uh, 4 over 10, uh, so, or 10 over 4 in this case. And anyway, you work it out, it ends up being around 25 meters per second squared, which is a pretty good acceleration. Um, uh, uh, one way we can look at this is, let's say I wanted to maintain this over 10 meters. Let's say I wanted to run basically halfway halfway across the class or a portion of across the class. So if I wanted to do 10 meters of this, um, we could actually work out what my final speed would have to be. So a v squared is equal to v zero squared uh, plus two a um, times uh, x minus x zero. Um, if I wanted to go 25 meters per second, my initial velocity is always zero. So 25 meters per second squared. Um, is equal to 2 um, a again if our a was um, oh I'm trying to find our final velocity sorry I'm, I'm actually winging it at this point um, so if I want to find our final velocity um, it's 2 uh, times a which is our 25 meters per second squared times the distance I was running again I said around 10 meters um, so that's 20 uh, so 2 times uh, 25 is, is 50 50 times 10 is 500 so 500 is equal to v squared, and uh, what's uh, what's what's um, the square root of uh, 500 is um, uh, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, uh, 10, uh, 20, 5 times 20 is 400. Uh, so it's like 23 or something. Like that. So my my final velocity is something like 23 meters per second or so, um, which of course is, is around, um, is, is, is roughly uh, 50 miles per hour. Um, uh, so I'm not going to do that. Uh, I, I'm not going to be able to get up to that speed, um, uh, regardless of how much distance I have to actually do it, and definitely not in the 10 meters I was running. Uh, so that's how you do that problem. Uh, I had uh, promised that I would do the angled problem that I asked one of my classes to do. Um, I'll be perfectly honest in that it is much too difficult to do. Uh, and I don't think it's particularly illuminating. So let's call this good enough and an interesting problem in itself um, and leave it at that. All right, thank you. And hope you enjoy.